We saw earlier Item Buttros leaving a meeting with the Prime Minister this afternoon there in Sydney. The ABC chair talking about last week's AFP raids on the ABC. The Federal Police also, of course, raiding the Canberra home of News Corp journalist Annika Smedhurst, all about trying to find the source of leaks that were embarrassing to the government. Sparking a lot of concern, though, about press freedom. The ability of whistleblowers to bring to attention, along with journalists, matters of public importance that governments may not necessarily want released. Well, there's a bit of a push on now for a parliamentary inquiry into press freedom, into some of the law changes we've seen over recent years and whether this has curtailed an important tenet of our democracy. Let's bring in Liberal Senator James Patterson joining me from Melbourne this afternoon. Senator, thanks for your time. Look, you support an inquiry, am I right? What sort of inquiry would you like to see? Well, David, over the last week, I think there's been a lot of heat and light in this discussion that's been misdirected. On the one hand, people have said the government's trying to shut down press freedom and they've ordered the AFP to do these raids, when you and I both know uh, politicians do not direct the AFP on operational matters. And others have said it's the AFP's fault. They want to intimidate whistleblowers when, in fact, the AFP's job is just to enforce the law. The constructive observations that have been made in the past week is if there is a problem, then the problem is with the law itself. And if we have uh, legitimate concerns and criticism raised about laws which are already on the statute book, well, the best thing we can do is review those laws and we've got parliamentary processes set up already to do that. So what I'm advocating is a very sober, very careful, very thoughtful review into whether particularly our national security laws, although not only our national security laws, and particularly in this digital era, how are they encroaching uh, on journalists' ability to do their jobs? How are they impacting on the public's right to be informed about policy decisions which affect their lives? So what form should that review take? Well, I've seen some suggestions in the media today um, that there should be a Senate references inquiry uh, into this issue. I have to say, I think the experience of the last parliament has been that Senate references committees quite often uh, get hijacked in a partisan way or for personal grandstanding. And, you know, we're all adults. David, of course, there's a role for that in politics. But on an issue of national security, if we actually want this to be a constructive process, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, there are... Uh, committees set up which are expert in these matters, like the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security. Um, so if it was within the scope of a committee like that, that's one possible avenue. Um, another possible avenue is to set up a dedicated committee, such as a Senate Select Committee, um, that could have a good look at these issues and report back to the government in a useful way. The Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence and Security is the very committee, though, that has... Uh basically recommended all of these laws that we're talking about here. Is that really the right committee to go and re second-guess all the work it's done and say, well, hang on, did we forget about press freedom? Do you really think they're going to do that? Well, that, that's a matter for the government to decide, David, but I would draw this important distinction. Um, the activities of the AFP, the warrants that were executed last week, were, in fact, executed under the Criminal Code. Mm -hmm. The most recent round of national security legislation which passed the Parliament last year and went through the Joint Committee on, on Intelligence and Security beforehand actually had a higher level of protections for journalists in it than the Criminal Code does. So, for example, uh, to seek and obtain a warrant, you have to also get the approval of the Attorney-General before that's executed on a journalist. Uh, it's been publicly reported that in the case of the uh, AFP warrant execution on ABC Ultimo last week, uh, that it was a registrar at the court of, in Queanbeyan uh, which granted that. So clearly it's a very different uh, standard for, for allocating those warrants. What, however this is reviewed uh, and whatever form that takes, bottom line, would you support a new law that simply states journalists have a right to bring to the public attention matters of national importance? I'm a little bit anxious not to preempt a committee which has not yet been formed, let alone heard any evidence, David. But as I say, as a general statement of principle, my view is the best thing that parliaments can do when we encourage, when we encounter thorny issues like this where uh, different uh, priorities have to be balanced, important priorities, mm. is that the parliament explicitly makes those judgments and puts it in the relevant legislation. Is that possible? Um, well, let me just jump in there. Is that possible to put in legislation uh, when the journalist has a right to publish and when something should be protected for national security reasons. Won't this ultimately always come down to a judgment call? It's not a perfect world, David, and, of course, it's difficult to, to um, encounter every possible different eventuality. But I think that method of, of being precise and targeted and deliberate and making that values-based judgement about when uh, which values are going to um, pr proceed uh, is preferable to the alternative, which, as some people have suggested, which is a standalone act uh, or even a constitutional amendment which says journalists have these certain rights. Because when you do that, what you're instead doing is you're handballing that decision to the courts and you're saying mm -hmm. to a judge, you have 
have to make what is essentially a moral judgment or a values-based judgment that actually I think the parliament is better equipped to do. Well, I don't know about morals or values-based uh, judgment. It's a, it's a judgment on what's in the public interest, isn't it, versus what is, uh, what is required to be protected for is genuinely a national security secret. Well, uh, that's part of it, David. But, mm. I mean, how do you decide how much uh, weight and... Uh, um, precedence should be given to national security on the one hand and the public's right to know and press freedom on the other. I mean, that's inherently a values-laden judgment. Who I should think. be making that call, though? Is, are you saying a judge? Are you saying... The Parliament. I, my, my view is the Parliament should make calls like that. But not um, on, not on every Parliament... story that the, the no, media wants not. to no, no, write. No, of course not. No, no, I'm not suggesting that, David. I, I, I'm saying in legislation. Rather than, um, rather than saying this is too difficult an issue for the Parliament mm. to resolve, I think in legislation we should be explicit about where the boundaries are, and this has been done elsewhere. Um, you know, Shield laws were passed uh, in the late 2000s, David, after the, um, the Harvey McManus case, uh, where a leak uh, was made um, on a veterans' affairs matter um, and journalists were um, convicted of contempt of court for refusing to reveal their sources. Shield laws were passed at the state and federal level to address the community concern, and I think, by and large, those are working well. Well, if you think... If, OK, except... if you think Parliament can then write down in law uh, what can and can't be uh, published... What would you just say about, you know, one of the examples from last week, the Afghan files story that the ABC ran? Is that something that should have been run? David, I've been um, pretty generous in uh, trying to answer your hypothetical question so far. I don't want to go That's too far further down that road. That's a story it, it that, because... that's at the centre of all of this. It, look, it is. I mean, I, I, all I can say is a general principle, which is that um, I, I think press freedom is vitally important and the public's right to be informed is vitally important. Uh, mm. Governments function better when they are scrutinised appropriately by the press and protecting governments from scrutiny, in my view, makes those governments function less better. I think that knowledge of that scrutiny and this, accountability... And did this story, the did this story deserve wrong, national attention? I, I don't want to comment on that specific story. But this story, is the problem David, that politicians that is... will have to face. If, if you're saying the parliament can you know, legislate this uh, sort of uh, conundrum, this is the very thing that politicians such as yourself will have to do. Well, we won't be saying um, is story X or story Y in the public interest. Um, we'll be setting out principles in legislation which dictate um, how those decisions are made. And I think that's, that is an appropriate task for Parliament. It's not appropriate for me as a parliamentarian uh, on a case that is about to be adjudicated during in the courts to say whether that particular one was in, in the public interest or not. But I have said the general principle, which I think is scrutiny is a good and healthy thing and the media has an important so, role. OK, play. but, for example, legislation could state as long as the story is not jeopardising uh, the safety of serving personnel, as long as it's not putting at risk Australia's um, you know, international uh, intelligence relationships, is this the sort of thing the legislation could say, that, you know, if, if the story exposes uh, serious wrongdoing, then it has a right to be aired? I think most Australians agree in abstract, David, that there is a pretty bright line between what is politically inconvenient and embarrassing for governments, which they might not wish to be in public, and what is actually uh, relevant to national security, which actually puts people's lives at risk, or which damages our relationship with our international partners and the access to intelligence that we have. Uh, we don't want to do that. And we don't want to um, have sensitive confidential information being taken out of the secure government sector and put in what is a much less secure sector in the media sector. That's not a reliable repository um, for secure information. So just finally, uh, to sum up where you're at on this, you support either an inquiry with the um, uh, J, uh, Joint Standing Committee for Intelligence and Security or a Senate Select Committee, and generally you do support the idea of some sort of greater legislative protection for the uh, freedom of the press? It would depend on how that Senate Select Committee uh, were formed. I mean, to be really blunt, David, um, if it's going to be chaired by Sarah Hanson-Young, I don't think the government is going to take its recommendations particularly seriously. Um, it needs to be chaired by someone who takes this important role of balancing these issues um, very seriously and understands the sobering reality that actually we are dealing with both a, a fundamental freedom in our Western society and the lives and, and safety and security of Australians, and that is a difficult task. But ultimately, some greater legislative protection for the press. Well, I think it, it might not necessarily be a greater level of protection that there already is, but it may be making it more consistent than it already is. So, for example, that one that I referred to in the metadata laws last year could be uh, applied to the criminal code uh, to ensure that uh, if a journalist is going to um, have a warrant executed upon them, uh, that a very high level of decision-making is brought to bear before that is done uh, rather than a more junior level. James Patterson, Liberal Senator, appreciate your time this afternoon. Thanks so much for that.